Studio One version 6.5 is a huge update. We now have Dolby Atmos integration. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get that set up on one of your mixes. And if you wanna learn more about Dolby Atmos itself, head over to Dolby's website, dolby.com. They've got a lot of great information on just what exactly this amazing technology is. And guess what? We now have it available to us in Studio One. That's pretty great. Let's dive in. This is a regular old bread and butter stereo mix of one of my songs. We're going to convert this into a Dolby Atmos mix. To do that, we click on Song. We come to Spatial Audio, which is a new setting here. And we can choose the regular old Surround Mix, which gives us a whole bunch of options. But we're going to choose Dolby Atmos. And this gives us a couple of extra options that you need to know about. The bed format is your starting point. You can assign different audio tracks to objects in addition to the bed tracks. And then the output format, this is what physical speakers slash headphones do I have on my system to listen to this 7.1.2 mix. So for me, I only have a pair of speakers, so it makes sense to have stereo. But if I had a 5.1 mix, I could choose that all the way up to 9.1.6. And it'll take whatever the bed format is, which we can also choose from these, and it will distribute it out to whatever we choose here appropriately. Okay? There's more interesting stuff with the stereo that I'll show you in a moment. But if we hit apply on this, the first thing you'll notice is a brand new window pops up. This is the Dolby Atmos renderer. We worked with Dolby to make the renderer a part of Studio One. So it's all happening under the hood inside of Studio One. There's a couple of things to note. First of all, you've got a really cool room that you can click and spin. That alone is enough to entertain yourself and your friends for hours. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Uh, but this allows us to have a visualization of what's happening in our mix. Specifically, once we start adding those objects I talked about into the mix, they'll show up as little glowing, floating orbs inside of this renderer here. The a couple things I want to draw your attention to right across the top. The first is the bed format and the output. We've already talked about those, um, but you should know that there's a, an additional setting that you can use if you click the wrench. Actually, let me explain it first. Let's say you have a surround setup. So if I choose my output as 5.1, which is five speakers and a subwoofer, um, let's say I have that physical setup in my room. If I choose that and I come over here and look at my IO setup under the outputs tab, I can see that my main mix, my main output, which historically has been just a stereo left and right output, it is now a six channel output. Left, right, center, LFE, which is the subwoofer, it stands for low frequency effects, left, surround, left rear surround, right rear surround, okay? And I can move these around if I have it hooked up in a different way, but these are kind of the standard, the standard layout. So that's what happens when I choose my output format. So I can choose stereo, which is left and right, which we're used to, all the way up to 9.1.6, which takes up 16 channels of audio to go to all those speakers. So for me, it makes sense to just choose stereo because that's literally what I have physically available to me. Now, if you do have something like a 5.1 setup, so you have physically that many speakers in your space, there's a really cool additional feature that we have here. If you click the wrench, you can choose this ad enable additional headphone output option. And what this does, it's allow it allows you to have your surround mix going on on your speakers, but then you can pick up your headphones and put them on and hear the binaural version of that surround mix. So if you have the full setup, having this additional headphone output is pretty handy. Now the way that works, if we come over to the output tab, we can see instead of just our main output, we now have the headphone output, which is assigned to the next set of outputs. Now, word of caution here, you wanna make sure that this output is by itself, that it's not also on, for example, something like this. If it's set like this, if we put on our headphones, we're gonna hear the binaural mix, and we're also gonna hear in the left ear, whatever's routed to the center channel, and in the right ear, whatever's routed to the subwoofer. Not ideal, right? That's gonna sound wonky. So make sure that the headphones are set to their own dedicated output. Now, that's for people with full surround systems. Since that's not me, I'm gonna turn that setting off, and I'm just gonna have regular old stereo as my output mode. Now, all of these settings are available to us on this new channel here on the right-hand side of our mixer. To the right of our main output, we now have kind of a simplified version of this renderer that we can see at all times. It gives us loudness measurements so we can see how we're doing in the loudness department. Uh, and we can also change our bed format 
and our output format right here. So if I'm listening on my speakers, it's giving me a stereo version of the surround mix. If I want to hear the binaural version, I can just mute my speakers, put on my headphones, and click that, and now I'm listening in binaural. I would imagine for a lot of people, this is the way they're going to work. Folks who don't have a full-on surround setup are going to have it set kind of permanently to binaural mode. That way, when you pan something behind you and up at the ceiling, it will sound a little bit like it's going behind you and up in the ceiling as much as it can on a set of headphones versus dedicated speakers. Final piece of this renderer is this. This is a trim knob for the entire Dolby Atmos mix. If we click here, by the way, click here on Dolby Atmos or here, it opens the renderer back up. This is the same knob that we see here. So Dolby is pretty specific and pretty strict about the loudness that it wants to see out of your Dolby Atmos mix. So they're they're a lot less, they're a lot quieter than a traditional slammed stereo mix. I believe the target loudness that they want to see is nothing above minus 18, I believe. So if you find that your mix is going a little bit above that, the the alternative is to go in and to turn everything down, right? Um, or you can use this little trim knob here. This adjusts the overall volume of the entire Atmos mix, uh, almost like sort of a VCA of sorts, uh, but it works across all of our buses that are feeding our surround mix, as well as all of our objects that are feeding the Dolby mix. It all kind of gets wound up and run through this single knob here, kind of like a master fader that adjusts that overall volume. So when you're getting right towards the finish line and you realize, oh, I, I went over by a decibel of the, the, the loudness that I need to be, we can use this to bring that down. Now you may wonder, I almost said the words target loudness just now. We do have a target loudness feature inside of Studio One, but that's specifically for stereo mix down. So if I come to uh, song, export mix down. If we're doing a regular stereo mix down, I can have a specific loudness that I'm targeting, right? Minus 16 luffs, for example. Um, that's not the same. We can't do that with Dolby Atmos based on the way the algorithm works because it's not just two channels of audio. It can be up to well over a hundred individual pieces of audio that all need to be turned down together. That's what this knob does. Okay. Okay. Now we've shown you kind of the basics of the renderer. What else has changed to allow us to do surround mixing? Well, the biggest thing is we now have surround panners uh, inside of the mixer. So real quickly, let me just adjust. I'm going to change all these to like yellow because I think it'll show up better. Let's make it something. Bro oh yeah. Lime sounds amazing. So this here is our surround panner. Now, if you've ever done any surround mixing, I learned how to do surround mixing on an old an old digital board, which is an oxymoron, but it was an old digital surround mixing console. And so it had these, these joysticks that you could move to, to pan things forward and backwards in space. So that's what this little joystick is here. And then next to it, this is the height adjustment because we're not only dealing with the two-dimensional, are you in front of me or behind me or to the side of me, we can now have you be above me or at eye level with me which is crazy because we now have like ceiling speakers as a part of these different surround formats. So we can adjust all of this here, which isn't all that fun, or we can double click on this and it gives us our new surround panner. So this is exactly what you'd expect. You click and drag to move things around to adjust the panning itself. But within this panner, we can adjust things like the width, we can swap left and right, and we can have a better visualization of what's happening with the height adjustment, because as you can see, as you get higher, it actually gets closer to you as well, because it's kind of a dome. So once we dial in our perfect panning situation, let's say we want to put this behind us, and we want to move the left and right to opposite sides, we can do all of that, and once that's in place, we can switch over to this balance section here, and that gives us a single knob that we can use uh, to adjust that overall setting here. So we have the perfect setting, the perfect width we want, but then maybe we want to move that just up or back in space with a single setting. We can do that here in this balance setup. So maybe we have the perfect width of this choir part over here, but we just want to move it back a little bit without messing with any of the other settings, we can do that here. And this can be automated, so now we can make things dance around the room as much as we want. So within this, this is, these are all just regular old surround panners. Let's do a quick panning job on this. Let's put cymbals, drums right up front, cymbals a little bit higher, because cymbals are higher in physical space. This loop we'll put in the back of the room. 
kind of halfway up the wall. Bass will be right between our ears. I'm just totally spitballing here. Let's make the guitars left, the acoustic right, keyboard behind us and up higher. Vocal will stay there. Background vocals behind us and all the way up high. Same with this echo, maybe not quite as high. Something like this. Okay, so those are all really interesting panning positions. So now that's just that's the surround panning bit of it. But if we want to turn these into individual Dolby Atmos objects, we can select all of these and we can click on this drop down and we can see we have two options for two different types of panner. If I have this channel or this bus routed to the main output, then it will give us the option to make it a surround panner or a spatial object panner. If I click spatial object, you'll notice the panner changes to a square panner versus a circular panel uh, panner, which means this is a an object panner, not a surround panner. Um, but what you'll note too is all the positions that I set were saved. This is apparently not true in some other DAWs. When you switch between a surround panner and a different type of panner, you lose the settings you had before. We can switch back and forth all day and it will save that position. Which, as with most things in Studio One, which is what won me over to Studio One all those years ago, that's intuitive, that makes sense, that's how I would expect it to work, and so it does work that way. What's the difference with the object panner? Well, let's double click on this and see. It's a little bit simpler looking. Um, we can still adjust the width, we can adjust the uh, all of that, we can kind of move it up and down, over in space, we can see it kind of twists to match where we want to put it in space, and then we can adjust the height over here. You can see it's getting higher and lower. But what's really interesting about this is all of these objects we just created, they now show up in the Dolby Atmos renderer. So check it out. It looks like uh, someone just threw a whole bunch of tennis balls that stuck to the wall in my studio. So this is a visualization of what's happening in my mix right now. So this is especially helpful if you're doing a binaural mix. So you're hearing, uh, kind of a, a summary, but not a full surround version of what's here. This lets you say, okay, this is behind me and all the way up in the corner of the ceiling. I don't quite hear that on the binaural mix because it's a simplified version, but that's good to know. Maybe I need to move that around. Now we can see these, we can click on these to see uh, exactly which ones they are. We can mute them here. We can do a lot of other stuff here that Gregor will cover in his video, but that's the that's kind of the core of the Atmos system is these objects and we can have up to 118 objects so that's in addition to just the standard surround mix where we start as we create object panners each of those becomes an object so since we have 10 of these here and they're all stereo that's 10 times 2 that's 20 objects in our atmos mix I think that's really interesting and I love the way that looks. Oh, and by the way, if you like using a tablet and Studio One remote as a part of your mixing workflow, you can continue to do that in Dolby Atmos and surround all of the panners and all of the features I've been talking about here are included in Studio One Remote today. Now, Gregor has a few videos showing you the plugin updates. That's right, our plugins are ready to go with Dolby Atmos as well, including a couple of new plugins. So be sure to check out his video to see what that's all about. Otherwise, if you want to get into this and you don't currently own Studio One version 6.5, the easiest way to get into it is to become a Studio One Plus member. For a low monthly rate, you access the latest version of Studio One plus a whole bunch of other goodies. Go check it out using one of the links in the description. Thanks for watching. See ya.